Got it. All right. Here we go. Hi, welcome everyone. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of people coming today. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Karen and Robin and oh, so nice to see you. Hi, Carmel. Hi, Jen. <laughs> Trudy. Kelly, awesome. And Kay. And I can even say it with the phone. What was that, Trudy? I keep forgetting I'm on mute. It's, <laughs> you're saying hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> it's all right. That's all right. Good. So that is fantastic. So welcome to our to honors. More and more people coming. I'm so excited. This is great. So welcome back for some of you to another great online gathering that we have planned for you tonight. <clears throat> have a, a, a little bit of weird title for it, don't you think? So uh, Tales Cook Along and Cleaning, really, of all things. <laughs> but we um, we thought about how we're going to do this. And the idea was we, we just want to share a couple of hacks with you. And I know every Thermomix owner always looks after some some hacks. And, and we see a lot of cleaning questions coming uh, on the socials. So we thought, well, just let's make a cocktail, grab something nice to drink, and let's talk about all of this. So um, basically, our purpose tonight is to entertain you. <laughs> and um, I hope, and I saw a couple of uh, people in their aprons, which is fantastic, that uh, you will cook along with us. And um, yeah, and have a little bit of fun. So on top of all of that, we will, um, uh, of, the, of the cook along, we will in, uh, share our hacks. So we can all, and, and also machine care, so how we can protect our precious machines that we have. So before we get started, I want you to get active in the chat box, please. So tell me, um, write in a yes or a yay or a, um, or a thumbs up, so whatever works for you, if you ever have experienced one of the following or maybe all of them. So a smelly bowl after you might cook some onions or uh, garlic. Um, so pop it in the chat if you have. Uh, no one so far, no smelly balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lucky you then, <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> um, so if you ever had experience some, oh yes, if you have a yes, sorry, uh, some burned residues, it's not really burned, but sometimes uh, burned, or it's, it's just something that seems to stick there on the bottom of the bowl. Here we come, yes, that's, that's a lot of yeses for that one. Okay, perfect. Um, have you ever experienced your scales either jumping up and down or sometimes they just slowly increase and go up to 10 grams and then go down again to zero. Aha, uh -huh, I see the yeses coming in. Uh, okay, you're not alone on that one. Um, you have no idea how to take your ball apart. No one ever showed you how this is done. <laughs> Hopefully we don't see any yeses here, but maybe um, someone has shown you a couple of years ago and you have started not to take it apart. Um, so if that's the case, Great, we haven't seen a lot of yeses here. That's fantastic. Um, have you ever made a beautiful curry using turmeric? And after that, you just had almost a heart attack because your bowl or your lid or the, the, the butterfly whisk that you've used turned green? <laughs> and it's shocking. Yes, yes, we have that. It's That's not yet, okay. Orange, yeah, green, yellow, yeah. So it definitely has stains in there. It's not nice and gray anymore. Well, uh, that's fantastic. So because you came to the right place, because we're gonna cover all of that and a little bit more tonight. So um, <clears throat> my intention today is to keep you for an hour or so into our thermal enthusiast bubble. And we're gonna share three things with you. First, um, oh, and also, and I've got a surprise for you at the end as well. And um, I don't know if you can, if you can actually see me. Are you all in gallery view? I hope you are. <laughs> okay, so you can see me. I'm not just Monty all the time. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> 
Okay, so if you go and gallery view, then you can see everyone else. So we, we nice oh, okay. community here tonight. Otherwise, it just pop by me. Um, so yes, three things and a surprise at the end. And uh, also, I want to invite you, if you, once we finish the official part, uh, just linger a little bit longer with us when we, um, it, because after this, we want to just um, hang out with you a little bit. You can ask us questions and get to know us a little bit better. And we are always on uh, open for new faces to come and join our team. So experience us here tonight and see who you would be dealing with. And if you think, oh yeah, these guys are fun. Um, yeah, why not just hang out then after with us and um, well, enjoy the cocktail with us. That's number one already. So we're going to start with making the cocktail and I'm going to head over to Melissa's kitchen. Let's see if I can spotlight you. Where have you gone? I'm here. <laughs> there you are. I'm here. Afternoon, evening, everybody. Here we go. Now I can see you. Lovely. Welcome. All right. I am making the ironically named summer days because if you live in Melbourne, we're anything but summery today. Um, but I, um, I wanted to do something a bit different with uh, egg white. So it creates a nice little foamy cocktail. So that's what I'm doing for you tonight. And before I start, my first planning tip is when it's not in use, leave your thermomix lid facing up so you've got the seal part rather than leaving it like that when it's not in use and just sort of trapping whatever smells might be left inside. So store it upside down. So that's my first little user hack for you. All right, Summer Days gin-based insert butterfly whisk. Very handy little video there for me if I didn't know what I was doing. Don't overcomplicate it. Whack it in, give it a slight turn, we're all done. We are going to whip our three egg whites, which I pre-separated, make life a little bit easier, and 20 grams of the caster sugar. Yeah, have a look, everyone else is, uh, is, has their egg whites ready or if they still have to crack the eggs. Okay. <laughs> Put your hand like that if you want me to hang on. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll keep going. Can't see any hands. All good. Everyone's organised. All of my cook along regulars will know you've got to get yourself organised first. All right, 20 grams of caster sugar. Insert your measuring cup. We're just going to mix this speed four for four minutes. So while that's doing that, I'm just going to leave the MC just on the top upside down just to let some air in there to aerate it so it doesn't slurp a lot in the kitchen. Um, my little cleaning tip that I would like to share with everybody is this little gem, tartaric acid. So it is, um, you can't get it in Coles and Woolies anymore, but you can get it from um, Richie's, IGA's, Food Works, little places that like that's about $3. And it is brilliant for getting your bowl sparkling clean. I've got one bowl in the dish which I can't show you, but um, I always use it. Sometimes I find when I'm cooking um, rice or I've made mashed potatoes, even though it's been through the dishwasher, it gets a rainbow bloom of oil on the bottom. Sometimes after a while, it just gets a bit of a cloudy bottom and we don't like a cloudy bottom. So I will just push some water around in it, tip it out, sprinkle some of this generous, sprinkling along the bottom of the bowl just leave it for five minutes and then you can get your scrubby which i think elizabeth talking about a bit later on or your um, brush swish it around the inside and it comes up really well my i mean my bowl is just brand new and they're three years old so this stuff is absolutely amazing i'm popping up there again tartaric acid um, and it's really good at getting off oil stains, just general cloudiness, a bit of burnt stuff. We'll get lots of tips tonight in the next hour of other ways that you can clean up your bowl. But this one's quick, it's easy, um, and it's very effective. So I have anyone got any questions on Tartaric before I move on? Thanks, Sandy. Yes, from Miss Amanda's Cocktail. This is called Summer Days, D-A-Z-E. Gin based, not tonic. I know some people that don't like gin because they don't like tonic. This has actually got sparkling mineral water. So it's just a little bit different. I'm on, what else can I tell you? I don't want to step on anyone else's toes, so I'll go 
shoot me some questions if you've got any questions. I've got about a minute and a half to go on this. Jenny, you've got something in your hand there. Yeah, I just want to say, so I have also had great success with citric acid. So I'm just putting it in the camera. I don't know if you can see that. So it's uh, basically anything with acidity. I don't know if you can hear me properly because machine's working. Can't hear me at all. One sec. Just making. Yes, you can. I can hear your machine. I don't know whether I can hear your machine or my machine, but I can hear a machine. <laughs> machine going on with the, with the cook along. Okay. Yeah, anyway, so anything uh, with acidity will just work fine uh, using that method. So, uh, and that's also from the baking aisle. We have in the in the chat box we have the question, the name of the cocktail, it's summer days. Sorry. Which but, is ironically from the barbecue cookbook. It is, that's right. That's what we just did um last week. Last week yes. and the fact that the interesting fact that because it's from the barbecue cookbook, and this is why um how you filter your searches is really important because if you were a vegetarian, for example, you would automatically discount the barbecue cookbook for something that might have something in there because barbecue would probably be full of meat, but it's got beautiful vegetarian, vegan recipes in there, desserts, dips, drinks. So it's got a bit of everything. So don't be fooled by the title sometimes. It's worth having a deeper dive and going into having a look um, through the actual recipes to see what might be lurking in there that you never thought that you needed to know about, much like this cookbook. And I'm done. Beautiful. So that was. Click go, please. Yeah, someone. Okay. All right. So there is my egg whites and sugar. And no, we're not making a meringue, but it's whipped up beautifully. So what I'm going to do is just push all that down a little bit. Actually, I might have to get rid of the butterfly. Yes, I do. Oh, look at that. And if I wasn't on camera. I'm going to lick the butterfly and have some meringue. I'll keep myself nice, put it in the sink instead. I'm going to push all that egg white down so we make sure we get everything in. Well, in the dishwasher, that can go in the dishwasher. What's that? Well, it's just got gift in the sink now because I'm not going to open the dishwasher while I'm standing right in front of it. Now, I'm going with a pink gin, 120 grams, but I have made this once before. And I did make a mental note that 120 grams was a little bit light on. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to go oopsie and do maybe 150. All right. I follow your lead. Sure. Oops. Or 160. Oops. 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 164. That'll do. Oops. All right. 30 grams of lemon juice. And 100 grams of sparkling mineral water. That'll do. 200 grams of ice cubes. Now, I don't know that I've got 200 grams of ice cubes, so I'll put in what I've got. Well, there you go, I've got more than 200. I want to dilute all the alcohol. Come here, ice cubes. There we go. 203 with egg white on your fingers. And two to three dashes of bitters. Off. One, two, three, that'll do. Are you, she said? <laughs> Looks like someone's had their throat cut, <laughs> but anyway. And another 30 grams of caster sugar. By the way, I'm using that beer to make that sugar free. Of course you are. <laughs> just That's just a, a good cocktail ruined as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> All I right. prefer the monk fruit sugar. <gasps> Yeah, I couldn't get my hands on the monkey. Oh, shame. Thing, so. Set measuring cup. I put it? Oh, here it is. And now we've just got 10 seconds on speed five. Right. I've actually done one of these on Facebook Live, and I actually like tonic, and I substitute to the mineral water for tonic water. Divide mixture between your cocktail glasses. Ooh, it's pretty. Right. How many are cooking along with us? 
give us a little wave in the chat box. I've got three children and half, two children and me and half a bowl of cocktail mix here. It's going to be a very creative evening. I'm someone standing right next to the screen and can't wait. So how long does it take? What is, what is it done? Is it ready yet? <laughs> it's done. It's done. It's done. There we go. So now we're going to garnish with a bit of lemon peel and I'm also just going to be really careful with a little drop of bitters on the top. You don't want to go too much because you'll find it shoots across your bench. But if you've got one of these hiding in your utensil drawer wondering what the heck that's for, peels great bits of lemon rind to go in your, it's got the little holes across the top if you want to do some zest. And then you've got this one, oops. And you can just peel off these really cute little bits of lemon zest, give them a twist and stick them on your cocktail. You can do that. I'm going to use and then sit off the side. Dried edible flowers for decorating. Good dear. Yeah. Get another bit and sit it on the side. It's going to stay there like that. All right, I'm done. Cheers, big ears. Mm. Cheers. All right. Better try one. Mel, I wish it was at your place now. Uh, your, your gin glasses are too small. <laughs> Here we go. They may be too small, but I've got all of this left over in there. <laughs> Don't roll them up. All right. That's me done, everyone. Hope you enjoyed your cocktail. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. I'm enjoying nice. it. Wendy's, Wendy's view is good. Nice. Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look what's Wendy up to. That's uh, just my, my uh, bucket. No. <laughs> I got these gin glasses for my birthday, so they get My year. gosh, that is a bucket. You're dead right. <laughs> is that a all in one? Is it a four in one? <laughs> I reckon I'd fit all four of uh, the four serves all in that one. Yeah. Hey, Wendy. Yeah. I'll see your bucket and raise your bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's <fun. laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm out. I've had one sip. God help me later on. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Melissa. We are heading now to Monsi's kitchen. Let me. Okay, now. What like you? Hello. Welcome to my kitchen museum. And I'm going to be doing something with my very old thermomix. This one is, is 15 years old. But I wanted to show you a couple of things about this one um so what i'm going to do that i'm not going to be cooking everything in front of you is i'm going to show you three eco-friendly ways to clean your thermomix and it's going to be one of them lemons that a lot of, of us have a lot of lemons at the moment uh pineapple skin and and also eggshell so with the um, Pineapple skin, as before uh, Johnny mentioned, anything with acidity, it will clean your bowl really well. So the good thing about the um, pineapple skin is that it will be like a, um, what is the scrub or a, um, well, I mentioned it before, we we're talking about it, that I lost the word, Johnny. Yeah, like it's a like, scrub. Like a scrub, it's like... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exfoliate your bowl. <laughs> so even if you don't, I would say use a freezer. So if you have a pineapple and you can't, you, you are not going to wash your bowl instantly, you know, freeze that peel and use it later. So then you can just mill it all and it will clean your bowl. So the acidity and the skin, the hardness of the skin, you exfoliate your, your bowl. The other good trick is the eggshell. And I'm going to give you two good tricks with the eggshell. So the eggshell will do the same thing. It will exfoliate your bowl. And then when you, you mill it, also add some water in it. When you finish with that, don't tip it on your sink. Tip it in your garden. It's very good um, to feed your plants with the eggshell. It's full of nutrients, your eggshell. So you are cleaning your bowl and also feeding your plants. And then the last one, 
And apparently, Pardon? what I've learned is also with the eggshells, if you put them in the, in the garden bed, it keeps the snails away. And I'm like, yeah, across. that's cool. That's correct. But it can be a snail as when we put it in here. So I've done it before. I used to plant my lettuce and I had a fight with snails. So I used to put uh, crushed eggshells, but they can be completely crushed as it will do with the thermomix. So then the other one is I'm going to show you with lemons. Now we all have a lot of lemons. So there is an eco-friendly um, paste to, to clean your, the, your thermomix. And it uses only a few um, ingredients that we all have. So one of our lemons. Another trick is that, for example, earlier I made an avocado and a guacamole. So I have a very sad lemon, have a lemon. I would use it also for my, my um, concentrate. Uh, vinegar, water, and salt. And that's it. So I will be making this. And the good thing about this wash is that you can store it for a long time. And every time that you need to wash your bowl, you just fill it with water, around 350, 350 grams of water, a heat tablespoon of this concentrate, and, and cook it for 10 minutes of aroma, fit too. The other thing, quickly, I just wanted to jump quickly. I'm aware that all these girls wanted to talk, is that if you have this model, the 31, remember that you have to have the green seal. All right, so you can remove it to clean it and, and it has to be replaced every two years or earlier if it's damaged. So, yep, you can remove it and clean it. And the last little trick that I wanted to show you is this nice brushes. I have one here, well used. And these little brushes are really good to clean between your blades in your thermomix. So, um, this is my all my tips. I'm trying to be quick, quick, quick. If anybody has any question, I will carry on and make my my lemon cleaning concentrate that I will show you at the end. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So you you keep um, cooking with your <laughs> paste in the background, and I have yeah. just added Megan to the spotlight. Megan needs to unmute your herself. Yep. There you go. Now I might be on, you got the right unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sorry, because I've got two things working. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Megan or Meg, Thermo Meg. And today I'm going to share with you the dip. So hopefully some of you might cook along, but if you don't, please give this um, recipe a try because it's very tasty. Um, it actually comes from this old cookbook. So if you've been around a long time, um, it is the everyday cookbook, but it's also on Cookie Doo, and it's called Capsicum and Sun Dried Tomato Dip. Oh, in this it. as well. <laughs> oh, oh, which one? Which which yeah. one did you have there? Um, I have it in the everyday cooking for Thermomix family. So ah, yes, yes. That's how it's called on Cookie Doo. Yes. Anyway, um, I personally like I like most food, but I really don't like sun dried tomatoes that much. But um, I do like this dip. So if you don't like sun dried tomatoes, keep going. Hang on, I've got something up there. Later. Um, okay, so what's in the dip? So we've got some sun dried tomatoes. Now you can have the ones in oil. I've got these ones that are um, from a sealed pack. If they're in oil, do drain off the oil. You can use the oil in the recipe, but these ones are drained. Um, we've got some Parmesan cheese and I've cut it into the size that is suitable for your thermo mix. I mean, mine are probably quite small, but they should be sort of ice cube size if they're very hard items. So if you've got ice cubes, don't have big blocks, giant blocks that are stuck together, have them in single size. Parmesan cheese, things that are very hard about that size. Cashews. Now these are raw, unsalted cashews. You can have roasted, but the having them unsalted is probably a better idea because the salt is coming from the parmesan. It's got some garlic in it, just a cute, um, one clove or what do you call them? Um, but if you love cut garlic, go for your life. There's a bit of um, vinegar and capsicum. There's half a capsicum. Um, 
some of my colleagues know I've gone a bit crazy on the uh, with the eyes lately. So I've been making little faces <laughs> with my vegetables. But you don't need to do that. Okay, so it's very simple. And I know Karen had a question about turbo. So we're going to come up to that. Whoops, I've lost my recipe. Anyway, it's simple. I don't really need to follow that too much because I know what to do. So you put your um, 30 grams of parmesan into the bowl, put your uh, garlic, and we're just going to chop that up for 10 seconds. So let me do that for you. So you know what that's like. It's going to make your parmesan into grated cheese, very finely grated. Oops. There we go. Ready? Ooh, that smell. I'm a yes. Who's doing that there? A head. Yes. <laughs> it does smell good. Yeah. So it comes out just like your parmesan wood, but you've got a bit of garlic in there. So it's beautifully fine. So that's really nice. You don't want to get big chunks of garlic in your dip, but that is beautiful. It says um, to scrape down the sides. So you're just knocking the cheese back down into the bottom of the bowl. Oh, it does smell really good. <laughs> Um, one thing about the parmesan, you can actually use um, the pecorino, which is the sheep's cheese. So, you know, the hard sheep's cheese has a different, slightly different flavour. So it's a bit adaptable. So then we have the sun-dried tomatoes or semi-dried tomatoes is fine. It's 100 grams. Throw those in. And half the red capsicum. So I've got that there. The other half is you know, murdered there on the plate. I don't even have little kids. I just get really... <laughs> <laughs> about my, uh, yeah. and 120 grams of raw cashews no salt um if you love salt or go for your life but you don't really need it and olive oil so it's 20 grams of that so the good thing is if you've got your tm5 or 6 it's um, already sales ready for you to weigh in it's about a tablespoon and 10 grams of vinegar, white vinegar. I've got that already weighed. There you go. Um, so I'm going to chop that up and then I'll come back and tell you a bit about what we can do with this dip. Oh. We're actually using you. turbo. Yes, we're using a turbo. I forgot to tell you that because someone asked a question about the turbo. So your turbo function is like a pulse function in um, a food processor. So it goes to top speed in a very short time. So we've got it on one second there. Um, so then you can have a look in the inside and see, is that how I'd like to eat it? So this is quite chunky. Um, I might let you have a look. It's five so to seven times. Yes, so I'm just gonna let you see what it looks like in the first shot. So it's very chunky there, but it says five to seven times. I'm probably a bit shorter. I'm definitely on maybe on even on the four. All right. It goes back, it remembers where I'm up to. What happens with the turbo is when you've got the TM5 or six, is that it comes up with the one second there. You can adjust that to two seconds, and then you just have to press back onto the dial and turn turn it, and it does the turbo, it does the pulse for you. So I did two there. And I think that's going to be good for me. But it's up to you how you like it. So if you buy this dip, which you can, in the supermarket, you've probably got a quite a fine dip. And in fact, it's down to that sort of level now. You can't really see, but I'll put some on a biscuit for you. Now, the good thing about this is it's like a pesto. So you can actually put this into, uh, so we're going to have it as a dip, but you could have it on a pizza. It's delicious on a pizza as a pizza uh, base, uh, not the base, but as in the sauce. And it's really good for a pasta as well. Um, we also used to make something else. Who's been around Muncie a long time? We used to make something else with it. I can't think what it is. Oh, I just something in... eat it straight out of the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it is, it's really tasty. Um, Meg, I've got other... it. Sorry, yeah. I'm on my second one. Hang on one minute. 
My kids don't want them. I'm down one and I'm on the other one. Um, you can use leftovers, add some um, olive oil and some vinegar and use it as a salad dressing. Oh, on, yes. On the Delicious. salads with, you know, the quinoa and all that kind of stuff. That's a great salad dressing. So I you can use some as a dip and some as a salad dressing. Yep. It's really versatile and it's, the flavour is really punchy and delicious. You can also add a little bit of rocket in there, um, baby spinach leaves. It's really good. Um, so that's that. We'll, I'll put some on a biscuit for you. I think Jenny actually made her own biscuits. I mean, that's a bit too much. Have you got those there, Jenny? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> let me... Oh, hang on. Oh, different. So it's too much technology going on after... Um, I know, so many different <laughs> devices. Hey, oh, Jenny, okay. I've got the recipe for that salad, so I'll send it to you and then you could maybe send it out to everyone with the recipe for the salad where you use the dip as a dressing. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just go, yeah, be creative. So I, I can find, I can imagine that mostly with any pasta salad that you, uh, that you have. Um, yeah, anyway, so I have made also these, um, they're called... What are called? Oh my god, <laughs> the alcohol is really working. Parmesan biscuits, <laughs> parmesan something. Parmesan <laughs> macadamia uh, nut biscuits, and um, just because they were on the on the on the photo in the book, and uh, yeah, so here we go, nicely decorated. I've I've just added a um, basil there on top, but yeah, so this is really nice for the footy later. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, now, the other thing I forgot to say is you can do this with other nuts. So if you wanted to do it with, you know, cashew, I'm sorry, we did cashews, but you could do macadamias. If you are allergic to nuts, you can do it with like sunflower seeds or some other um, nuts or seeds. Uh, it still works and still tasty. Um, something else. Oh, we were talking about turbo function. Now, Karen, she mentioned that she seemed to have a problem. I just wonder if you're there, Karen. Yeah, um, I was just going to say, because um, I use that, that pre the turbo to pre-clean the bowl but it won't work it just says update your software but I've updated my software like three or four times mm. I don't know if you've come across that before do you have a, a tm5 or a six a six a six okay and you're connected to cookie jewel yeah right um how about we uh, we talk about this separately but because I, I I think that uh, there's a solution for that but we can definitely talk about that this yeah this, cool yeah thank you thing on. yeah all right now I did want to say though about turbo so and I haven't done it yet in mind but when are uh, you what what can you use turbo for as well so we used it for very quick pulse function but what you can do is actually when I've cleaned out my dip and you've got still got um, a lot of residue on your blades and you're thinking how can I get that off it's really a bit fiddly with my spatula you can actually put your turbo function on and it flicks any residue onto the side of the bowl and it's much easier to scrape off. So it's fantastic for uh, dough, really good for cake batters. Um, it's going to be good for the dip. So, you know, please use your turbo function. It's in all your thermo mixes um, to get all of the food out of your bowl and into your mouth generally. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to say. Um, oh, I've got two other things. I keep saying about one more thing, sorry. Now, um, Jani and Monty both talked about the citric acid or a, um, acidic um, food or whatever, yeah, products to clean your thermomix. Now, I do see a lot of people on thermomix yeah. forums and they talk about, oh, my bowl looks dirty or I've got the rainbow or I can't clean it. One of the easiest things is actually cook a tomato-based sauce because the tomato is full of acidity and it will actually clean your bowl. So you don't even have to worry about doing all these things. You can just cook a tomato -y sauce and it'll clean your bowl pretty much. Now, my next thing is about what happens when you have cooked a beautiful curry which contains turmeric or turmeric, I'm not sure how you say it properly, and it stains the lid of your bowl. Who's had that? Put your hand up. Mm. We had a couple yes. of those earlier. Mm -hmm. And it actually is very distressing, especially when you might be, it might be your day two, you've got your thermo mix and there it is. It's all turned yellow. Now you don't have to worry. Um, you can remove that with ultraviolet light. So where are you going to get that from? 
just put it outside. So you can just take your lid, put it outside in the sun for actually not very long, half an hour would be fine, and it will take away the yellow stain. Um, the same goes for tomato um, stains that will also do it, clean it up, and even on your clothes. So if you have a um, the yellow stain from turmeric or from stamens, from lilies, put your clothes outside in the sun, it actually really takes it away. It's like magic. You think, gee, that was the easiest clean I've ever done. So definitely with your turmeric stains, put it outside. Now, some people I do see on forums like, oh, that's too dangerous. You'll ruin your lid. But in Melbourne, I don't think that's going to happen. If you're living in Queensland and you're putting it out every day, you might have a problem. But if you put this outside for half an hour in the sun, like 10 o'clock in the morning, you'll be fine. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. I've, I've done it really multiple times with all of my um, accessories that have been stained and they're all nice and grey back again. So definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's such a magic thing. And honestly, even with your clothes, a white T-shirt, you get the lily stains on. It's yeah. terrifying. You think, oh, my God. And you put it outside and the sun will take it away. <laughs> nice. All right. So thank you so much, um, Megan. We will quickly hop back to Monsi to see how the paste is going. And we had a question whether we can access the uh, or we okay. share the recipe. And the answer is yes. Yeah. Recipe. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna share the recipe, but I have here the ingredients that is so easy. There are things that we all have, as I mentioned before, lemons, everybody has lemon at the moment, vinegar, white vinegar, the tip is to clean salt and water. That's it. You don't need anything else. I was about to do my last step, that is, you know, it looks like lemon curd. So mark it well. So I made lemon curd, mark it well, <laughs> although you can smell the vinegar. <laughs> and it looks like a lemon curd. And the good thing, well, then when I empty my bowl, you will see that it is sparkling. Um, whenever you need something to clean, as you were saying, if it's anything grease, just put water, it hits a tablespoon of this. And you can, you know, it lasts forever because it has, um, you know, the, the uh, salt to mm. preserve it, like our vegetable stock. Yeah, so, that's yeah, that's right. So it is a, a vegetable stock to clean, basically. And cook it for 10 minutes at barometer my temperature, I speak to. Yeah. So, yeah. So I blend it and then show the texture. It's, it's really like lemon curd. At the moment, I have, you know, you can see tiny, bits of lemon so mm -hmm. i just going to blend it completely and yeah that will be you know i don't think that it will harm to leave those pieces but yeah right we have okay. the patient i can do it <laughs> thank you so much monty and yes i'll get that cleaner myself and I, I use it basically for anything in household cleaning but not just only for the bowl so that's yeah. been a really really good tip there thank you yeah and I forgot it, and that paste, if you put the same amount of that paste and baking soda and mix it all together, it's brilliant to clean silver. Mm. Very eco-friendly to clean silver. Perfect. There you go. Another one. Another tip. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now we're heading over to beautiful Sandy. And yeah. Sandy is going to... Tell us a little bit about the prickling. I am. So tell us in the chat who doesn't use their preclean or doesn't know if their machine has a preclean. Um, because the TM6 definitely has a preclean and in actual fact we've got four modes on the preclean. Uh, and the TM5 has a has a preclean too, but I think you've only got the one uh, mode, isn't that right, Jenny? Uh, yes, that's right. you've got a clean yeah. mode, but you need to have the cook key to be able to have the latest software version where they have added the pre-clean as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to show you tonight on the TM6 and um, just talk about the mode, show you where they are, and then we'll go through a little bit of the machine cleaning, um, just so that you know how to look after machine, 
um, and so that it just lasts you forever. So on the TM6, just swipe to the left as you normally do to get to your mode. And then mine may be in a different order because I've moved the order of my modes around, but you'll have a pre-clean mode. So when I select that, you can see here we've got different modes. You've got a dough mode, which when, if you make a lot of bread and, and pizza doughs and things like that, the dough mode is amazing. It just cleans so well. Get every last little bit of dough out of your bowl. Uh, then you've got the universal, you've got your fats and caramels, and you've got a browning mode. And if I click on this little eye for information, you can't really see it on my screen, but it will give you some information in terms of, you know, how much vinegar to add or um, dish, a little squeeze of dishwashing liquid. You really don't want much. Um, the last thing you want is everything to bubble up uh, in your bowl and overflow. So if you're using a lot of dishwashing liquid, that will happen. So I always just say to my customers, just use a pea-sized squeeze of dishwashing liquid um, and then you'll be good to go. Uh, with the browning mode, you don't use dishwashing liquid because it's actually what it's doing is bringing it up to temp and it's boiling it because it's trying to get some of that browning off the bottom of your bowl. So if you're using browning mode, we actually use a bit of vinegar in that one um, rather than the dishwashing liquid and obviously the water still. Um, and that will clean off everything off the bottom of your bowl. And we do see, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I've got all these brown marks on the bottom. You know, that's all the caramelisation. There's a lot of flavour, obviously, in that caramelisation. It's no different if you're using a fry pan or a pot on the stove. Um, you get a lot of that caramelisation going. I've got one hot tip here for you. So if that doesn't do the trick with the vinegar only, then um, try and use half a tablet of a dishwashing, a dishwashing tablet. <laughs> or alternative, I don't know, but it was long before we had tablets, there was dishwasher powder. Can you hear that? Oh, this way. <laughs> so it's powder, it's not liquid, all right? It's also available um, at, at the, the cleaning aisle or half a tablet of that. And then put on the browning mode and that will definitely get all the residue that is there still on the bottom of your bowl off and you're going to have a sparkling clean bowl afterwards if you do have two bowls you can you can reuse the mixture then for a second bowl again by the way Good tip. hot tip here yeah, that's awesome <laughs> so so to, you know that's that's basically your pre-clean mode so definitely you'll have those four modes if you're on the tm6 you'll have just one pre-clean mode on the tm5 um, but use them they'll become your best friends so I generally will cook dinner, dish up, and I've trained my whole family now that as soon as we're dishing up or I'm dishing up, someone will just go and fill up the bowl. And it's like magic. Uh, they'll fill up the bowl with their water. They'll put the pre-clean mode on. And while we're sitting down and having dinner, it's doing the pre-clean for us. And I come back and my bowl is really clean. I just need to rinse it out, give it a little bit of a swirl with, with the brush. Um, and I'm done and dusted. So use it. It will become your best mate. I reckon it's one of my favourite modes on the, on the machine. All right. So that's the pre-clean. Is there any questions in regard to pre-clean, Jenny, that anyone's not sure about? No, I just see that um, Robin says, or Rob says he uses the pre-clean a, a lot. And, um, and Karen obviously um, has some software of, uh, problems. So... Um, we'll 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 talk with her separately about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, perfect. All right, so I'm just going to turn my machine off now, and I'm going to just talk about a bit of machine care for you. Um, you can tell I'm looking at my machine now. And I'm thinking it's actually a bit too clean to be able to show you a lot of things in terms of dirtiness. It was obviously me that used it last, not my boys um, or hubby. But what you really want to do is turn it, turn your machine off. And just turn it off and unplug it. So I'm just going to unplug it as a PowerPoint. And the reason I'm doing that is so that while I'm cleaning, I don't, I won't turn the machine on by accident. Um, you know, I can turn the knob, you know, the dial without it obviously going on and things like that. So the main thing, turn it off and you're good to go. Okay. So what 
you're probably going to say, well, what's the best thing to wipe it down with and, and things like that? So many of us will just use a bit of a, um, I guess, a solution that we've probably made up with just vinegar and water. You really actually don't need much vinegar in it. It's probably maybe, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon, um, maybe a probably two, and then I just put it in a spray bottle. And you can just, I just spray it. I've just got a microfiber cloth, so a nice soft cloth that's not going to scratch my machine. And I just give my microfiber cloth a bit of a spray with the solution. And you just go from the top and work your way down and just give it a good wipe down. Um, and you just want to be able to have that soft cloth so it's not scratching and, and doing anything else, but it, um, it works really well with that solution. And you're just going to give it a good wipe. And don't be scared about cleaning everything. Um, you know, you want a nice clean machine. So go for that. So that's your microfiber cloth. So if you haven't got one, just grab them. Any microfiber cloth will do. Um, you see some people talk about, obviously, the Thermomix and the Vorwerk, uh, really um, the naming on the machine and it's fading and things like that. So, look, if you're using um, normal cleaners and you're, you're going over the top of that and you're using, you know, scrubbers and things like that, it is going to come off. So just if you want, if you're not worried about it, it's fine. But if you want to just be gentle with it and go over the top and give it a good clean. And then what you have is, um, I'm going to turn my machine just down for you a little bit. Can you see? Yes, you can. So what you've got in here, um, obviously you've got um, the shaft that your bowl is going to go into. And oh, now I look, I can see a little bit of dirt down in my little hole here. And what you've got down here is a hole. So that's designed so that if you put any, you know, spill any liquids down there and things like that, that it will all go down into through that hole and onto your kitchen bench as opposed to going into the motor. So don't stress too much. It's not going to go into your motor. You've got that hole there for a reason. Um, and you still want to be able to give that a bit of a clean. Uh, what you've also got in the shaft, you'll start to get a few crumbs and things just inside here. What I do is I just get a cotton bud um, just a general normal cotton bud and they're the perfect size for this and you can just give it a good flick and give it a clean out and I'll just flick it out into this area of the thermomix and it will all be nice and clean okay and then what I have and I don't know if any of you have got this this is what should we call this this is our sweeper brush so you can get it from the mix shop um, and it's a double-ended brush and so you've got uh, the brush on one end and you've got a little soft end on like from this end. And you can just use it in your machine. So you can give this a bit of a sweep and everything's the perfect size. Everything fits nicely. So give it all a nice sweep around inside. Push it all to the back if you want into the hole and give it a push down through the hole. Um, same thing inside here that I was doing before with the earbud you can just sweep all that out and again, just put it into this area through here and you can just get it all out or either with a soft cloth or um, uh, like I've, or your sweeper brush. So that's the inside of the machine. Now, using this sweeper brush, I've got this end on it, okay? So it's just obviously just some bristles on there, but it's just the way it's shaped and it's actually really thin can't really see. I'm trying to sort of do it so you can see it. Um, but it's perfect size for the arms. So your arms, you really want to be quite gentle with the arms of your machine. You don't want to be using any force on these. Um, the last thing you want is for this to come off and then have to send it off for a service. So you can just sweep the inside of the arms and make sure there's no crumbs and, you know, sauces and things like that. Uh, left in there, flour, sugar, whatever it might be. So just give them a bit of a sweep down. And then you've also got those little knobby bits. Um, so these little knobs on the arm. So what you might do with your microfiber cloth is just give it a little shimmy behind. 
I don't know if you can sort of see what I'm doing, um, but just have it as a little shimmy behind those little knobs on the arm. And you want to be able to just give it a shimmy. And it will give it a nice clean in there as well. So you've got all of that going on. And then the brush, very magic this thing, will also go behind your dial. Okay. So that is, you'll be very surprised how much stuff gets behind this dial. Now you can remove that dial, but it's a little bit hard to put back on. So I generally don't take my dial off. And I'll just give it a good sweep behind with this brush because of the way it's shaped, it will get right under it. If you don't have one of those brushes, again, just go back to your microfiber cloth and get behind your dial. And you can see it will just sit behind there and you can just give this a little bit of a clean as well. All right, and you can keep going around, give it a little bit of a clean. And because it's off, you've got it all unplugged, you can give it a bit of a turn as well. Make sure there's nothing stuck under the dial and things like that. Um, and with the cooking, <laughs> just normal. Yeah. That, just, you don't feel ashamed. It, it happens, you know. We, 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 these are working horses, these machines. So just give them a little bit of TLC from time to time and uh, they will thank you for it for many years to come. <laughs> Absolutely. We want your machines to last you for a lifetime. All okay. Right. Whilst you at it, will you just quickly show us um, how we can resolve the issue with the scales going up, up, up and down, down, down? What potentially could be uh, the case? Thank you. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn my machine on its back. That's all safe. And what you've got, obviously, you've got your three, uh, your three feet, which are your scales, okay? If there's crumbs and things on your scales, you just want to be able to give them a, a wipe with just a slightly a slight damp cloth or do it during your machine care when you're cleaning everything. And you'll just see there might be some crumbs. Um, so just give them that wipe, uh, that little wipe down and that will generally sort out um, like your scales jumping around or you might find there might be a few crumbs on your kitchen bench or things like that. So just, um, again, if you've got your vinegar or anything that and vinegar and water wash that you're doing, just give them a slight wipe. You can give them a bit of a turn and they'll just keep turning around. Okay, make sure there's nothing stuck around it. Um, but that's your scales. Um, you lastly just under here, you've got a little mesh, uh, like a little mesh. Um, I don't know what you call it really. Just a bit of a, a mesh. <laughs> protect them, maybe. Um, and so that you just want to give that a bit of a wipe down as well. So just make sure that there's what this is doing. It's protecting your machine from getting any nasties in there, little insects or whatever else might be floating around. So you just want to give those a bit of a wipe, and they do come off as well. And lastly, I turn my machine around. What you've also got, you've got this backing plate on the on the TM6, and again. You want to be able to just give that a little bit of a clean and it actually does come off. You'll see down here there's a little knob that you can pull. Now it's not helpful with nails, but you can just gently pull that off and you can give just a little wipe down in here as well. So again, you've got another mesh here as well. Give that a little wipe down. Give all this a bit of a wipe down with your, with your vinegar and water wash as well. And then this will just go back on. Now I have to try and do it backwards while I'm standing backwards. Um, but this will just click back in. And that's it. Perfect. Um, and the machine's all nice and clean. If you look after it and do it fairly regularly, um, your machine will last you a lifetime. Ah, oh, this is lovely. Oh. Thank you so much. And I think we've, we've had a little bit of, uh, well, not a heart attacks, but so I was just holding their breath saying, oh my God, can you do, can you do that with the machine? Like turn it sideways and backwards? And yes, you can. Really, it's, it's, it's very sturdy and uh, you want to protect your scales by, what well, I mean, with your life. All right. So that's, that's really what you want to do. So no one <laughs> can get too close to the machine, but um, you want to keep your scales nice and safe and um yeah great tips thank you so much sandy for no worries. with us and we are heading now over to elizabeth oh hi there 
Um, tell us a little bit more about, yeah, more cleaning okay. tips. Okay, all right. Well, I'm very, very low key this time. Uh, so to keep me entertained, I made myself a cocktail, not the <laughs> one you, you made. I made the Turkish Delight which yes. uses frozen cranberry, very good for women. We like that cranberry juice. And uh, a little bit of product placement. <laughs> this, this is our latest cookbook. And that's what I'm doing. But all that lovely Turkish delight and Persian fairy floss, a little bit too sweet for me. So I've just bypassed that. But if you haven't had a look at that book, have a look on Cookie Do or if you can get yourself a hard copy, it is fabulous. So back to what I'm supposed to be talking about. You're in Blair Gary right now. And normally I can look out during the day and see the skyline of Melbourne and it's just been drizzle all day. But I've kept, kept myself very happily entertained. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the brush. And I'm pretty confident that all of you have one of these. And if you don't, Maybe it's something that you want to pick up from the mix shop. This is the original one. And if we flip over to Monty's kitchen, you'll see all the colours. <laughs> Can we do that? Have a quick look at Monty's bowl of brushes. Let me find her again. So there she's waving. She's yeah. waving. There we go. Show us your brushes, okay. Monty. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Aren't they fantastic? And you'll see this one that's a natural echo one. So if you really cloth. prefer the wood with the little natural brush, away you go. Now you might say, well, this is plastic, but this is not a once user. I actually have had my original one. Are you ready for this? Probably when I bought my first TM31, probably 15 years, and it's still fine. And I do throw it in the dishwasher. Oh. Mm. Uh, so anything from the, the mix shop is always top quality. You can always be very rest assured. Yes, it does go in the dishwasher. And because it lasts a long time, I think it can justify the plastic. So how do we use it? Not really. Oh, don't want that one. We'll put that one back. What's better than one Thermomix bowl? Two. <laughs> so if you don't already have two, talk to your consultant because sometimes it's offered as a special whiz bang deal with post reward. Um, not at the moment, though. So. Not at the moment, not at the moment, but just if you sort of say, look, I'd really love a second one and if I can get it with some whiz-bang deal, please keep me in the loop. So this is your bowl. Oh, hang on. This one's a bit sexier. Uh, this is my brush. So it's pretty straightforward just to pop it in. Now, another little tip that Jenny taught me just, uh, I think, a few days ago is... If you clean it like this in a clockwise direction, you're not touching the sharp side of the blade, which is comes when you're using your spatula, you pop it behind the blade to wipe, you're not going to shred your, your, your spatula with the sharp side of the blade. So really, it's very simple. To find two scrubs, down she goes, a bit of detergent, whatever, the preferred, and that's your brush. Woohoo! <laughs> so... <laughs> What happens next? We've talked about the pre-clean. I've used it with great success. Sometimes you might just go, well, you know, it's, I'd like it to go a bit quicker or I'd, there's a little bit left, let me get that off. What I suggest you do is take your bowl to pieces. Here we go, there's one bit, there's the other bit. So here's my bowl. And what I'm going to do is again, from the mix shop, or oh, it's a brand new one, a scrubby. And again, it is made by, with plastic, but it is plastic from bottles, so it's all recycled. Again, this will go in the dishwasher, and because it's plastic and not metal, it's not going to scratch your bowl. So just a tiny bit of detergent, give it a zhuzh around, away you go. Again, I showed you a brand new one. Mine lives in my kitchen permanently and gets used for other, product, other purposes as well. And when they first came out, I can't remember how many years ago it is now, but I've still got my original one and it's pristine. So it hasn't worn out for me. So my bowl is now separated. What do I want to show you next? I think I've forgotten. Putting it back together, maybe? Yeah, putting it back together. So basically as is, so this is how it can go in the dishwasher. That's what we wanted to talk about. Okay, okay. So look, some of, 
I find this does get dirty. So I do put it in the dishwasher. But if it's not getting dirty and it's perfectly clean, you don't need to put it in. However, my dishwasher's got a tray for the cutlery. So I don't have a cutlery drawer that I can put it in. So a little hint is if you're putting that in, you just rest the blade in there and it's not going to interfere with anything else. So it depends on the type of dishwasher that you have. Uh, um, the other thing... Sorry, can I just say also, if you want to, depending on the space you've got, if you turn that bottom part upside down, you can say just the bottom of your bowl, the bit that you just picked up, no, the, yep, that, turn it, so that way I put my, um, sorry, I haven't got mine here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so the way, so yes, you can do it that way. Or you can also put them in that way so that they stand up a little bit higher yeah. and they'll be able to clean into the dishwasher. Yeah, either way. So out from the dishwasher it comes, reassemble your blades. Here we go. Very simple. So as I said, all pieces go in the dishwasher. When you are ready to put it back into your housing, please remember these, these little pins need to be dry. So just make sure, little tap to dry, no big deal. The other suggestion that has been made by a lot of my colleagues is when you have taken the bowl to pieces, just to prevent you from making a bit of an error, if you're not washing the housing, pop it in there upside down, which means you can't just pop the bowl back in. I have one darling customer who I love and adore. She hasn't done it once, she's done it twice, <laughs> has not reassembled, this went in, and then in went the ingredients. And it can wow. happen very easily. Really, it, 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 we, don't, we don't judge because that is, that is something, um, look. Just oh, all of us have done it. Yeah. All of us have done it. It happened really easily. It's a very simple thing to do, and that's why since, since uh, my customer has done it twice, I always make my new, always say to my customers, please, 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 Never put your bowl back in the housing unless it is completely reassembled. Yes. So I think that's pretty much all for me. Yeah. Wasn't that, that exciting? It was. Any, it was. You got any, a question. Oh, any questions? Does anybody yes. go? Yes, there's, there's a question there from Robin. Mm -hmm. So she wants to know whether the plastic of the TM6 bowl is okay to go in the dishwasher. Straight answer? Yes. Yes. Everything. Yes. <laughs> all, all this can go in the dishwasher. All the attachments, the butterfly. This cannot. No. <laughs> and we do know someone who did, <laughs> despite being told that didn't go in the dishwasher. It all, all goes in. Your lid, your measuring cup, the butterfly, the uh, simmering basket, the Thanks. aroma, all can go in the dishwasher. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, cheers. Yeah, cheers to you. Um, I think I'm going to uh, finish this round off. So back to me. And oh. we have, yeah, so it, it, just keep these questions coming. That's all good. So we were talking at the beginning about the smells. Um, when you have made some, some very um, intense dishes and um, I've got one hot tip here for you. And that is just mill. Well, a measuring cup full of coffee beans. That will take away the smells of your bowl in absolutely no time. So I just smell them 10 seconds, speed 10, and uh, let it stand there. And the coffee beans will actually absorb all the bad smells from your bowl. And in saying that, the bowl is stainless steel, right? So that actually doesn't take on any smells at all. What I potentially can take on the smells is the lid with the silicon ring. So if you mill the coffee in here, so all of that little bit of flavor will go also and stick to the, to the, to the lid. And another thing that is not completely stainless steel is that little green ceiling ring here in the middle. All right, can you see that? So that one here. So from time to time, so it's also a good idea just to remove that a little bit and you can give that a wash and you can also um, get a replacement for that, by the way. So, but if you pop that blade 
into the dishwasher, it usually also cleans underneath. But potentially that little green bit here can also take on the smells. Everything else is stainless steel and it doesn't take on any smells. All right, makes sense? All right, so that was one thing I wanted to share. And as Melissa also said in the beginning, um, if, you, if you store your lid, just turn it upside down and have it like this, then this way the inside of your lid can breathe throughout the day when you're not cooking. And that also helps to take away the smells. So coffee beans or air. <laughs> that will definitely help. Sorry, and, Johnny. Yep. Can I also, my um, concentrate is tearing up. So I was thinking that it's going to be a pain. That's another one to remove the smell. If you make this concentrate, lemon concentrate, I reassure you, you won't have any smell. <laughs> okay. But you can see the consistency. It is totally like a lemon curve. Yeah. Very good. Oh, Thank you. Right. And using your lid as a funnel, I can see that too. Right there. <laughs> we love to share extra tips. <laughs> All right. Good. So um, to keep you um, safe from cleaning, first of all, don't make a mess. Ah, it's too easy. <laughs> oh my God, I had too much cocktail. Anyway, so to actually help you preventing making a mess in the kitchen, I want to share one more tip here with you. And that is how to empty your simmering basket. Um, and you probably have experienced that before if you do using that method. So we all know that our spatula that comes with the machine has that little hook here in the back. And if you ever wondered what that is for, there is a little hole on the inside of your um, simmering basket. So you go in there and you hook it up. That's how you can maneuver around. So if that's full of hot cooked rice, that's the way you go in um, hook your simmering basket up and take it out. But now it comes. So if you want to take all the inside out, then what will happen, <laughs> your food will open up the lid and splash. Just everything goes everywhere. And that's what you want to avoid if you can. So here's my hot tip. So just tilt that a little bit to the front. You can see that better. So use your spatula. Open up the lid first and then go in and hook your simmering basket up. All right, just like so. Take it out. And if you now want to empty your simmering basket, then the lid won't splash open and um, you won't have to clean the rest of the kitchen. All right, so here's another <laughs> extra tip for you to prevent making your kitchen dirty in the first place. All right. So, oh my, this is this is how much uh, alcohol I had already. <laughs> Having a lot of fun here with you guys tonight. So let me quickly recap. So we said we were going to share three things with you. First one was the cocktail. No, the first one was having a lot of fun. No, it was the cocktail and having fun. The second one was the well, was the dip and was the was the cooking, and obviously the third one was the cleaning hacks. But I also promised you a surprise. So for everyone who has registered for our event tonight, I do have a nice one pager and it's called Deep Cleaning Tips. And I'm going to email that together with the paste recipe from uh, what Monsi showed us um, tonight. So you will get access to all the, the cleaning tips that we have. Um, I've laminated mine just so I have them handy uh, and can reuse them. And there's actually a couple of more tips on it that we haven't talked about. But the dishwashing tablet is part of that one too. So I hope you are going to like that one. So um, imagine working with all of these incredible women that you saw here tonight presenting, and myself, <laughs> um, having a little bit of side hustle, um, a, a COVID resistant um, business going on, working from home and whilst you're working, you're actually making dinner um, or just something having on the side or something you have for your own if you want to or need to go away from the family from time to time. 
I will. Just be honest. It's, that's fine. It's okay. Every any one of us wants that from time to time. Then, um, yeah, I want you to linger a little bit longer and have a chat with us. Get to know the team and uh, imagine working with all of us. So we would love to welcome a few of you uh, on board with us. And um, just letting you know, we are also planning our next event next weekend, actually. So we haven't decided on the date and the time yet. I think it's going to be at 2 p.m. either Saturday or Sunday. We need to, I need to figure out when the footy finals are on. So we're not having a clash with that one. And the topic is going to be um, cookie do kids. So we want to, so we're planning a cook along with your kids in the kitchen. So we're going, and if you um, have been on Cookie Drew lately on the star screen, you will see that is, uh, so you can also get a, cert a certificate um, and become a certified mini cook. So that's what we- Jenny, Jenny, grandchildren too are invited. Absolutely, grandchildren. Don't forget about my age group, please. <laughs> grandchildren are in. Or uh, grab a neighbor's kit, you know. Just, um, I'm like, stealing the kit from next door. Yeah, just borrow one. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> or um, release your inner kit. That's also absolutely fine. All right. So that's the end of the official part. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And, um, yeah, have a lovely rest of the evening. Enjoy the rest of your cocktails. And we're going to stop the recording now. And, uh, yeah, I hope um, you'll linger with us a little bit longer. Thanks so, so much. Bye now. <laughs>